And having spoiled principalities and powers, remember the fourth kingdom? He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. The Bible is telling us that Jesus made a show, a triumphant show, of his enemies while he was hanging on the cross. Notice then what the scripture says in the book of Acts chapter 5. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. So we see here that even Jesus Christ is portraying this symbol of the Antichrist by triumphing over the Antichrist by himself being a picture or a model of the defeat of the beast in the last days. Which leads us to another famous figure in the scriptures that was hanged on a tree. His name was Judas Iscariot. After he had denied Christ and after he had sold him for 30 pieces of silver... The Bible says this concerning Judas. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. The interesting thing about Judas is that he is the only one in the scriptures other than the Antichrist himself who is referred to in John chapter 13 as the son of perdition. Now, once again, let's get back to the candidate as he is approaching the inner sanctuary of the lodge, which, remember, is a picture of the heart of man or the temple of the human body. Remember that the candidate is searching for light, and he is blindfolded because he doesn't know yet who his worshipful master really is or the identity of the master that he is about to bow to and serve as being a member of the lodge of Freemasonry. His clothing is what's interesting at this point. We see that the Mason, the candidate to Masonry, is being brought in blindfolded, and he has his right sleeve up and his left sleeve rolled down. We see that also that his right leg is rolled up and his left pant leg is rolled down. Oftentimes you will see a Masonic candidate or a Masonic candidate is dressed with his shirt partially open and partially closed. Masons refer to this as being not naked, but not clothed. The key to understanding the Masonic clothing is right in front of your very eyes. We see opposites. One arm bare, one arm covered. One leg bare, one leg covered. We see the chest, the body of the man, partially covered, but partially bare. This is the fusion of the opposites or the fusion of two kingdoms that are opposite one another one divine one human one from heaven one from earth symbolic of the fusion of male and female together similar to the way that Baphomet is represented now before the candidate walks into the actual chamber or the sanctuary of the lodge itself he must do so by getting permission permission is granted to him so long as he gives three and only three knocks upon the door. Why three? Now this number three we're going to see throughout this presentation. It is one of the most sacred numbers in all of Freemasonry. Now I want you to remember as we've already looked at part of the secret behind Freemasonry. Remember the cable toe? It is a cord of three strands. We have seen that that cord represents the fusion of the two kingdoms, man's two-strand DNA being added to by a third strand, a triple helix of DNA. But let's look back to the source of the number three and its meaning. And we go back to Genesis chapter three. Genesis chapter three is the story of the fall of man. The tempter come in deceiving Eve, Eve eating of the fruit that God forbid them to eat from, giving to her husband Adam, and thus all mankind is born into sin. I want you to notice particularly what Genesis chapter three reveals concerning this sin. Here is the tempter, Lucifer, the serpent speaking. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was, here it is, number one, good for food, 
Number two, that it was pleasant to the eyes. And number three, a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. Notice the pattern of the number three concerning the fruit that was hanging from a tree. The Apostle John refers to this in 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. So we see that the sinfulness of man is always associated with the number three. When the Masonic candidate walks into the sanctuary, the inner chamber of the lodge, he is walking upon what's called the mosaic pavement. It is a tiled floor consisting of black and white tiles. This shows the union of opposites, black and white, male and female, yin and yang, heaven and earth. Now, so far we have seen several examples, and we will continue to see examples throughout this presentation, that masonry involves the fusion of things that are opposite, black and white, male and female, the union of the divine or the heavenly with the earth. And yet God reveals to us in his word that the true nature of Bible Christianity and the true belief of God is not the fusion of things that are opposite, but the separation of things that are opposite, including light and darkness. Genesis chapter 1, And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Paul reveals this same doctrine in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. He says, Be ye not unequally yoked together, with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? Notice the opposites. What communion hath light with darkness? Notice the opposites. What concord or agreement hath Christ with Belial? Belial is a name given to Lucifer. Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement, here it is, hath the temple of God with idols. Now remember that in Revelation chapter 13, when the beast rises up out of the sea, having his deadly head wound that is healed, the false prophet rises up out of the earth and he builds an idol or an image to the beast and all of the world worships the image or the idol of the beast. And the apostle Paul says, what agreement hath the temple of God, which is the human body with idols? In other words, he's saying, and he is predicting what is going to happen in the future, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. How is it that the temple of God, the human body built by God himself, how is it that it could be fused with the temple of idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, he says, as God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Jesus himself predicted in the last days, a last days church that was going to be the fusion of things that are opposite. He said of the Laodicean church in Revelation chapter 3, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, the fusion of cold and hot together, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. So now the candidate has knocked three times upon the doorway. He has entered into the inner sanctuary of the lodge, or the very core of what is going on in the lodge, which, remember, is a picture of the temple of the human body. The candidate is then brought to the exact center of the Freemason Lodge, where he finds the altar. In the house of the Temple Lodge in Washington, D.C., the ceiling directly over this altar is a large pane of glass. This is so that the candidate can be blessed by Osiris, the sun god, by day, or by the stars, the twelve signs of the zodiac, by night. The altar is symbolic of the death of the candidate. And because it is in the center of the lodge, many Masonic authors agree that it represents being halfway between the human part of the lodge 
and the divine part of the lodge. So therefore, it represents the point of transformation. To the candidate, this shows the fusion of heaven and earth together, as above, so below. Sitting directly on top of the altar in the Masonic Lodge is usually a King James Bible. Now, in the House of the Temple Lodge in Washington, D.C., you may have seen a lot of clips of this. Uh, there are actually eight what they refer to as sacred texts, which represents the volumes of the sacred writings of the various religions of the earth. One of the things that Freemasonry likes to let everybody believe is that they embrace all religions or no religions at the same time. And yet, in that same building, there is a different meeting room where the upper echelon of Freemasons meet, the 30 33rd degree Masons meet in this special room and it's said that they conduct various business agreements or business arrangements concerning uh, the lodge and some of the things they do. I've been in this room and there is the altar in the center of this room and of course there you have the altar being in the center of the room representing the fusion point between the human and the, and the divine and on this altar in particular is one book and that book is the King James Bible. On top of this Bible, something that you will see in almost every lodge around the world is the symbol of the square and compass. Now, we're going to show you what that square and compass means here in just a few minutes, but I want you to remember the symbolism here. Remember, the Bible represents a perfect representation of the DNA of mankind, the seed of man. And now we have something placed on top of it, along with it. Because they believe the Bible to be an imperfect book. It needs to have something added to make it right. Here again is the symbol that man right now is in an imperfect state. Once something is added to mankind, he will now be a perfect being, a God. This then brings us to what is the quintessential symbol of all Freemasonry the square and compass. The images are based upon the tools of a stonemason. Almost every Masonic author agrees that the square and the compass fused together represent the fusion of things that are opposite. Albert Pike reveals in Morals and Dogma that the square represents the earth, the female, the passive. The compass then represents the heavens or the male part or the active principle. And they are fused together. This shows the fusion of the two kingdoms that Daniel spoke about. In Daniel chapter 2, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Notice this emblem from Albert Pike's Morals and Dogma, which is the cover symbol for the 32nd degree, which is called the Sublime Prince of the Royal Secret. Notice we have a figure here, a body. In the right hand, the body is holding the compass. In the left hand, the body is holding the square. And of interesting note is that this body has fused into its body two heads, that of a man and that of a woman. The fusion of things opposite together. That is what the symbol of the square and compass means. If then the compass represents the male and the square represents the female fused together, the symbol of the letter G would then represent their offspring or the result of their fusion together. Many Masonic authorities agree that the letter G represents geometry or several of them say that it represents God. But one of the easiest ways to identify the letter G and the symbolic meaning behind the letter G is to count. The letter G is the seventh letter of the alphabet. And so G represents the number seven. Remember, as we discovered earlier, that the beast, the Antichrist, has seven heads. His father, the dragon, the one who gives him the authority, also has seven heads. This is representative of the opposite of the seven spirits of God, or as the Apostle John referred to, the spirit of Antichrist that is already working in the earth. 